If you guys recall, we talked about a story involving Square Enix not too long ago where they commented that they were going to be aggressively pursuing multi-platform releases for AAA games moving forward. This is part of their new business strategy. And they were going to target platforms such as Nintendo's platforms and others. And at the time, there was quite a few comments, and you know who you are, saying that, oh, this is clickbait. Square Enix isn't going to actually bring all their games multi-platform. They're not going to bring things to Nintendo Switch 2. Clickbait, clickbait, clickbait. Wake up! Hold on! Are you subscribed to Nintendo Prime? You might not be. You're going to want to be here because if you subscribe and if you drop a like on this video and if you go down to the comment section down below and tell me your favorite Kingdom Hearts game and why and how excited you are to maybe play these things on Nintendo Switch 2, if you do all of that, you're going to be smiling today. And I'm going to tell you why. Following Nintendo Prime is going to give you access to literally all the latest news on Nintendo Switch 2. You could tell. It's a running joke on the channel. Here, here's Player Essence making fun of me for it. Uh, Suzanne, I should make even more Switch 2 videos. What's very clear is if you want the latest on Switch 2, you need to be here. That's not all we do, of course. We want to cover other stuff. And it's just we're waiting for that next Direct, right? The next Direct's going to have the big stuff. We'll have a little bit of news in this video towards the end about the Thousand Year Door as well. So you want to check that out. But look, while we're keeping you up to date and we're doing our live streams, we have our podcast, we're talking about all this very gaming news switch to you want to know you want to stay right here you want to strap in because it's going to be a bumpy ride all the way to reveal and beyond launch uh we'll have unboxings we'll have pre-order stuff well it's going to be crazy we are excited for this platform it's the next generation of nintendo and you know what subscribing to us brings the next generation of your life as we grow together and try to hit 150,000 subscribers. You guys are helping my dreams come true. I am a full-time content creator. This is what I do for a living to support my three children. And I am so thrilled that I get to be there for them every day. I get to show up to all their school events. I get to go to all their practices and their games. I don't have to let a traditional job get in the way. YouTube is enabling me to be the father I've always wanted to be. So thank you all for those that are already subscribed and supporting the channel. And thank you to everyone else who decides to subscribe subscribe today to continue to support the channel. So let's go ahead. Let's put the shades on. Let's get ready to talk about this awesome Kingdom Hearts news for Nintendo Switch 2. Now look, I don't have the reputation of being a clickbait king for no reason. Yeah, we make some enticing to click on titles, but I like to think we deliver some useful conversations and information. And today we have a little bit extra weight to Square Enix doing this because you guys see the title. Kingdom Hearts 4 is reportedly coming to Nintendo Switch 2. And that game's not even out yet. It's been announced, but it's not out yet. Pretty crazy. What are we talking about? Well, it all started with an announcement Square Enix made today about Kingdom Hearts coming over to Steam. So let's go over to this tweet here by Summer James Fest. But if you look at this original thing, it comes directly from the Kingdom Hearts uh, Twitter. It says, Kingdom Hearts is coming to Steam. Kingdom Hearts HD 1.5 plus 2.5 Remix. Uh, HD 2.8 Final Chapter Prologue. And Kingdom Hearts 3 plus Remind DLC are all launching on June 13th. This is really good for Steam and PC users. Really happy about that. And this guy named Summer James has said, a few months back I heard some rumblings from his source that Square Enix brought on a team to improve Steam Deck compatibility for these ports. They weren't 100% sure about the validity at the time, but they did mention June slash July being the potential release date, so I believe it. So basically, this guy's saying, hey, they made this announcement, and now my source, uh, I, I, I really like them. And that's cool, but this isn't the guy we're talking about, because we don't know anything about Summer James Fest or his reliability, uh, especially in the Kingdom Hearts space. But as we scroll down, Midori decided to chime in. And Midori, if you guys don't know, that's this person right here, M B K K S S T B H. Z5. They are literally considered to be as reliable as Pioro. Uh, so it just gives you an idea of why we're paying attention. It says, I heard something similar a few months ago too, but I didn't believe the information at the time. In February, someone sent me a message about Missing Link, Kingdom Hearts 4, and the Steam ports, but I did not know the source at the time. So this was like a new source for Midori. Decided not ever to say anything because none of this stuff was verified. But it's looking like their information is correct, but I was not familiar with the Kingdom Hearts series. Remember, Midori usually has sources at Sega and Atlas, maybe a couple at Nintendo. This would be different for Square Enix. Uh, but Midori's basically saying, hey, with this announcement, that means her, that, hey, her source was correct. Her source said this was happening, 
and she didn't believe it, so she didn't run any stories or put any reports out about it. But now it's like, oh man, now that this has been announced, hmm, it looks like that source might have been correct. So what are we putting on here? So Javi responds and says, what did they say? Midori says, they said the Steam ports were in development since last summer. A company named BitGroove is working on Missing Link, and the next beta test would be in April. Kingdom Hearts 4 has some small online features and looks very different from the first trailer. The quote name is apparently Quattro, or however you pronounce Q-U-A-T-T-R-O, but this is the most fascinating part. The entire series and Kingdom Hearts 4 might come to the next Nintendo hardware. Look, at, let's read that again. This is from that source that was right about all this stuff regarding the releases on Steam. The entire series, so all the Kingdom Hearts game and Kingdom Hearts 4 might come to the next Nintendo hardware. Nintendo Switch 2, man, this, this looks like Square Enix fulfilling that promise they made publicly that everyone told me was clickbait. Again, Nothing's announced yet, so it is what it is, but this is just more evidence to the pile that Square Enix is literally all about making their games multi-platform on every platform they can exist on. Kingdom Hearts 4 coming to the next Nintendo hardware sounds exciting. Uh, it says, and more outside IP collaboration is planned for Kingdom Hearts series in the future. This same source also mentioned that there was not a Final Fantasy X remake in development, but confirmed multiple Dragon Quest projects and Final Fantasy IX remake. Uh, this says, what Dragon Quest projects are we talking about? Please don't <laughs> be more mobile games. Uh, and I think it was a mobile title. So that's unfortunate for Dragon Quest fans. Um, so... There you go. You can kind of see that's what all Midori had to say on the situation. And folks, look, obviously this is all rumors at this point. It's just Midori has been one of the most reliable leakers and insiders over the past couple of years, along with Pioro. Uh, obviously, you guys know some other insiders like Nate the Hate and the rest, but Midori and Pioro are sort of in their own categories. Even on the gaming leaks and Reddit subreddit, they call them tier one leakers because they are considered the most reliable. Them and, and people like Tom Henderson over from Inside or gaming. So when we look at this stuff, I treat it a bit more seriously than any other rumors and reports out there. Now, what I will say is naturally nothing's been announced. Like obviously the Nintendo Switch 2 platform hasn't even been like shown yet by Nintendo. We have no idea when it's going to come out. And so we naturally aren't going to see games specifically for the system yet until Nintendo fully reveals it instead of just saying, hey, the Nintendo Switch processor is coming. We're going to talk about it in the future sometime in Q whatever. It's going to happen this fiscal year, right? So I think when we literally sit back in the back of our minds and look at stuff like this, you need to be skeptical, right? Always be skeptical of every rumor you see until it's announced. That, that's just true of no matter who says it. I don't care if it's Pioro. I don't care if it's Miyamoto dropping a hint until it's actually announced. It doesn't really matter. I mean, even when it's announced, it's not always the case. Guys, remember the Wii Vitality Sensor? Satura Awada was on stage showing the Wii Vitality Sensor being used, and yet that product never came out. So even when products are shown, at least we know they existed, but, you know, didn't come out. We've also seen a lot of Vaporware titles where titles get announced and don't come out. We're wondering if Beyond Good and Evil 2 is maybe one of those titles. But right now, this to me is just a very exciting prospect. Kingdom Hearts is one of the most beloved IPs a Square has, right? They, they have a few uh, really big AAA IPs. You know, obviously Final Fantasy is sort of like their big flagship, Dragon Quest, and Kingdom Hearts. They obviously have some other IPs as well. And us on Switch have gotten to enjoy a number of their smaller titles from guys like Team Asano. You know, we've gotten things like Bravely Default 2. That was really excellent. But we also got, you know, Octopath Traveler, Octopath Traveler 2, Live Alive, Triangle Strategy, these smaller HD 2D style RPGs that are more traditional uh, and really just seeing a big resurgence over this last generation. And I think that's probably going to continue moving forward because the big AAA RPGs are always going to be popular, but they don't come out very often, right? Because they take so long to make. I mean, look how long Elden Ring took to make. Look how long Grand Theft Auto 6 even. That's not even an RPG. Look how long that's taken to make. Look how long games like Zelda. I know not a traditional RPG, more of an action adventure, but still, look how long big 3D Zelda games are taking to make. Five, six years. Look how long it's going to take for Elder Scrolls, a new one to come out. So, yeah, it takes a long time for these bigger AAA ones to come out. And so it's nice having some of these smaller, more classic adventures coming out and then renewing themselves and adding in more modern features. So I'm really excited about that stuff. But Kingdom Hearts, 
Hearts is a beloved franchise crossing over Disney and Final Fantasy. It's a very popular franchise and has its big fans. Like I'm sure HMK, uh, for those who don't know, he's a, he's a fellow content creator who loves Zelda and Kingdom Hearts pretty much equally. Uh, he's probably just ecstatic today because he's a big Nintendo guy as well. And the idea of being able to play non-cloud versions of Kingdom Hearts games on Nintendo hardware is just exciting. Remember, they technically gave us all the Kingdom Hearts games outside of four that's not out yet through the cloud. And that was one of the worst releases in Nintendo Switch history. So there's like two big things here. Having the games come over and be native, we, we, we hope so. Technically, if you wanna read the letter of the tweet, it just says, and I'll show you again, and the entire series in Kingdom Hearts 4 might come to the next Nintendo platform. Technically, you could play Devil's Advocate and say, well, it's just going to be cloud versions again. But the next hardware is significantly more powerful than the current. And I think it's safe to assume that especially the old part of the series, you know, they already have on cloud on Switch, that they would, you know, bring those over in a native way. There's no reason to anyway. Like, the excuse is gone. The Switch could already run most of those games natively if they wanted them to. And now even Kingdom Hearts 3, no problem being able to run on even newer hardware. Uh, and But the, the idea of Kingdom Hearts 4 being there and maybe even being day and day with PlayStation 5, Xbox, and PC. Uh, again, just show Square's commitment that they already said. Now, hasn't been announced yet. Square Enix hasn't made any major announcements right now about future releases in 2025 and beyond. We might get some news coming up this summer. We have Summer Game Fest and all that. Who knows when Nintendo actually reveals their new platform. There could be third-party games tossed in there. What if Kingdom Hearts 4 is in the reveal trailer, even if it's not a launch game? Because if you guys remember the reveal of Nintendo Switch, there were games teased that weren't for launch. They were for later. So you could see a Kingdom Hearts 4 tease in there. You could see Elden Ring, which that might be more of an option for a launch potential title. Uh, you are going to see, obviously, future Nintendo games that aren't launch games teased in there. And that won't even be everything, because who knows when the platform comes out. There could be a direct quickly after, advertising even more products. Look, we're ready for Switch 2. I, I think that's maybe the biggest takeaway. We talked about this story yesterday, how I had a couple of developer friends uh, who over the last couple of weeks have been informing me how excited they are for this platform and how they feel uh, a lot of third-party games are going to be coming to Nintendo Switch 2. And it's really exciting to hear how they are excited and the sort of support we could be getting. And the idea of getting Kingdom Hearts 4 day one would certainly be an example of the sort of support Switch 2 could be getting. And I... I'm just ready, right? I'm ready for this thing to be here. I know it's going to, we, we got to be patient, right? We got to be patient. It might not be here till holiday 2025 or something, right? We, we don't know when it's going to come out. We hope by March, but that is it, still a hope, right? There's some hopium. There's also some rumors behind it, but really hopium that it comes out in March. But I'm, I'm, I'm really excited. Eventually, we're going to turn that excitement towards the next Direct, right? We have a June Nintendo Direct coming up. We're going to you know, speculate on that, talk about that. Probably some rumors will pop up around that. Maybe some PRO leaks as well, the closer we get to it. But I'm personally really excited for what's next. I'm also excited for how Nintendo plans to end the Switch generation. I do get this feeling the June Direct is going to be the finale uh, for the Switch in terms of it, the last dedicated Nintendo Switch Direct. And so I do think it might be a bit of a banger and have a lot of really big and interesting games, even if that might disappoint some of you, like, hey, Metro Prime 4 could be in this thing and come out this year. And if that happens, man, people will be like, why isn't that also on Switch 2 like Kingdom Hearts? It might be. I have no idea. That's the fun part about Nintendo right now. We don't know what's going on. They're kind of being silent killers, just like they were with Thousand Year Door. The reviews dropped today. 89 overall on Metacritic. Pretty exciting. In fact, that was going to originally be my video today until this news came across my desk. That's right. We were going to talk about something that wasn't Switch 2, but I think this Kingdom Hearts 4 news is bigger news than just telling you some review scores. Uh, look, Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door is good. It was good 20 years ago. It's still good today. Uh, unfortunately, it looks like no new content, though. Uh, that was... A little disappointing for me as somebody who doesn't replay games a lot that, there, that there's no new content. But hey, they did do one really cool thing. Uh, for those that know about Vivian, 
right? Vivian's one of the characters in the game. I don't want to spoil too much here. Uh, Vivian's story was edited a little bit in the original release compared to the original character and their backstory in the Japanese version of the game. That has been eliminated. So they actually have the full backstory in for Vivian like was originally intended in the original release. Uh, but wasn't there in the translator version here in the U.S. So that censorship is gone. I love censorship just not a, being there. And Nintendo, this kind of shows a more mature Nintendo today that's willing to let some of this stuff in. I'm not going to go quite over what was put back in. I'll let you guys discover it on your own by playing the game. Remember, it releases this Thursday. Pretty excited for that release as well. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for being here. I am Nathaniel RoboJets from Nintendo Prime, and we'll catch you in the next video.